Your three minute question and answer period for the Scotiabank Climate Action Challenge will now begin. Can you clarify what you achieved just this year versus previous years? Of course, yeah. So this year we prepared our system to be delivered to uh, Malone Middle School in New York, which will be going out in just a few weeks. Uh, we were also able to divert over 40,000 water bottles worth of plastic waste. Um, we also did expand our education program and provide climate action education to over 300 youth across North America. Uh, on top of that, we did prepare our internal processes to allow us to uh, produce after sales services with our operators. So we are prepared to grow in the future. Do you have an exit strategy for this project? That is a really great question. So currently our plan is to operate Poly within our Enactus team for the foreseeable future. Uh, and we do have the infrastructure in place so that as student leaders do transition throughout the project, uh, we will be able to maintain operations. Uh, with that being said, if we do see a point where Poly will produce more impact as a standalone venture, uh, we are prepared to do, do so. Uh, our team does have a history of transitioning projects outside of our team to run on their own. Um, so if that is the path that uh, ends up being the best to take, we will be able to do that as well. How has COVID-19 impacted your project? It's a great question. So there's been a lot of challenges due to COVID, um, but we've really seen it more of a, as a opportunity to expand and try new ways to create impact. Um, so as I did mention earlier this year, we did focus on expanding our virtual education program, um, and we have been able to uh, really grow our impact to over 300 students across North America. Uh, with that being said, there has been some challenges. Our uh, production was slowed down throughout the year, um, but we have seen now that our production is, has uh, reached back up to normal levels, um, and we will be able to start operating uh, as normal as we have been for the past few months. How do you ensure that your impact through this project is long lasting? Yeah, so that's a great question. So while developing our systems, we benchmarked our systems with the industry standard and consulted with uh, several different subject matter experts and iterated and redesigned our machines three times to ensure that we were operating as efficiently as possible. And then we became experts in running our machine ourselves. So not only we know how the machine works, but also how to uh, properly track that impact and ensure that it's long lasting into the future. So we essentially uh, translate all of that knowledge that we gained uh, from running our own um, systems to our um, operators through a spreadsheet system which we now share with them as well as calculate our CO2 uh, oil water saved ratios through a, an external environmental footprint that is just used throughout the plastic industry um, and then we keep track with our operators uh, on a frequent basis it's not just to uh, cut the relationship off once the sale is made it's a continuous relationship that we're continuously building to ensure that that impact is uh, continued um, well into the future. What effect has your project had on greenhouse gas emissions and how is an impact measured? That's a great question. Um, so this is something that we've considered very heavily in our project. Um, and while using our using the poly system to create new plastic does make some CO2, it is significantly less than what is used when you make virgin plastic. Um, so we have incorporated the CO2 output into our input impact calculations um, so that it is, is contained in our CO2 numbers. Um, so while there is some, uh, it is still a very large uh, net positive to using a poly system compared to traditional measures, um, as we do use uh, about 83% less CO2 to produce our product. Your time has now expired. Thank you, University of Ottawa.